What's happening everybody? Jim here from Clockwork Industries. Welcome back to another Rough Cut video. Today I was working on an LS GPU support and these brackets are done on a single fixture right here. And the way they are machined on both sides is through the dowel pin holes. And this has been a critical part of my manufacturing process here. You could kind of, sorry about the camera there. You can see them there. Now, this seemed like it was going to be a daunting process when I first started doing them, but it really isn't. And I just kind of want to talk about a couple quick tips that could help in doing this with anything you have to work on that is mostly out of sheet material, but anything you have to flip to get to the other side. And if you aren't using soft jaws, you're using fixtures or a spoil board, this method will work with both of them. And I just kind of wanted to talk about the critical point of that or the critical part of it. And basically with these Atlas GPU supports, we have some features on both sides that require nice edge brakes. And there are a couple critical tolerances. And the best way that I found to do it was flipping it on dowel pins. Nothing that I cut and make in the shop and run production on is done out of like block stock. Now there are some potential products that I'm working on that could be made that way or will we have to be made that way in the future, but everything I've done over the years is cut out of sheet material. This is a scrap left over from an Atlas GPU support. Now there is a good bit of waste material on that because this isn't the final form for those basically. They're eventually gonna be done on a sheet where I can cut four out of each one and it'll be done on a bigger, larger custom fixture for that. The first one that I wanted to get out just to get the product finished and get the design into the cam software and into the machine and cut out, I just wanted to get it done to work on my current fixture system. The new one will fit in the 1100 on a larger custom fixture that will basically go right onto the base plate and will not go onto the adapter plate that can be used on both machines. And this is what the type of sheet material I've used to cut all the cable combs. And basically, because I'm not working with aerospace tolerances in terms of thicknesses, thickness can vary on pretty much all of these parts other than a couple machined features. Now, what that's allowed me to do is save costs in having to buy thicker material. You know, I'm, I'm competing with products that were created and mass produced overseas. So I can't go too, too, too far above market price that's already been set by similar products. Now, I haven't seen too many other CNC machine like premium GPU support brackets. And there's a handful of other various uh, aluminum cable managements out there, none of which have edge braked chamfered holes or anything like that. Uh, that's something unique to what I do. And in order to keep that and make that, a, make that process uh, profitable and functional, it had to be done on a fixture system. So all my cable management is done on sheets like this. It would be insane for me to have to cut out little pieces of stock that big. The side, this is these two holes here, that's one part. And you can see the outline border of the part. So to cut individual stock for that would be absolutely insane. Now, that just kind of culminated in the way that I start to process things because out of necessity, I have to figure out how I can how I can accurately cut on both sides of a piece of material to cut out that many parts and have it all come from one piece of material like this. So I basically devised a way to, and it's, it's pretty straightforward and it's used in tons of different applications, but you can see on this fixture here, inside here is a dowel pin hole right there, another one down there, and then same on the other side. But the, the, the main part of that is that they're symmetrical. So the, the, key, the key trick to doing it is making sure your dowel pins are symmetrical on the axes that you need to flip. So everything I do is on the Y or on the uh, X axis. Basically what I do is I'm modeling all the parts. I do not program everything on, I do not program each one of these parts. Uh, that, that would, requires so much horsepower on the computer, I don't even think I can get to the final part clicking all the segments to contour all those cuts. <laughs> Excuse me. So what I do is on this fixture, I program the bottom corner and then I pattern it up in a Y and I take that Y pattern and I pattern it in X all the way across. That allows me to program one part and cut the entire sheet worth of parts. That's also been a, a very helpful uh, 
solution, I guess you could say, to machining multiple production parts and using a program like Fusion 360 where it would be incredibly bogged down and barely functioning by the time you selected all those contours. Now this also spits out a program that is one program patterned throughout the whole thing. So like when I need to, if I need to go to like this comb because that's where the fixture, a tool, a tool broke or whatever, I can go click on this in the code and go right to it and it'll show you just that exact program i can hit start because it almost it's like it does a re little mini program reset every time it goes to another part so when it gets there i can just run the program so it calls up all the tools and everything i hit cancel and then i go right to this one and can start off instead of having to filter through lines of code and just kind of guessing if this is going to be the right spot to start at you know sometimes it's more difficult to go mid program and start up again when it's not calling out your tools or any kind of g-code for it so it makes it super helpful to jump in now i do lose a little bit of probably uh air cutting time you could say but you can really fine tune that and get it so it's only coming up as high as you need it and uh i guess the biggest benefit would be if you could if you could program them all at one time you can have it link the parts without coming up at all and they could kind of flow to one another but this just gives me a lot more process reliability and it's this whole method of doing the dial pin flip and cutting everything from the sheets allows me to do the production the way I do it and get these parts out there at an affordable price. Uh, so basically, the key thing is getting a perimeter, tangent rectangle made on your model for all the parts. So if I had to pattern out the cable combs, I'd pattern them all out and then I would draw a rectangle that's tangent on all the corners. So it's basically the exact grouping uh, boxed in and then get a diagonal line across so you have a center point and then draw out a center point rectangle. So in this case, I draw that center point rectangle out and then I get the, I get the dowel pins in between the corners of a couple of the cable combs. Uh, on the Atlas GPU support, I've got the dowel pins way out in the area where they wouldn't be affected by anything while I was doing the interior cuts. Because once this is, uh, once the dowel pin flip is done, I, end up putting this clamp sheet on and cutting it out and pulling out the dowel pins anyway. So they're out of the way once I do the final cut and everything. But it's basically just getting those dowel pins into an area that's symmetrical on the axis that you need to flip it on and out of the way of the material or any other parts that are gonna be, or any part of the part that's gonna be processed. So that is the, that's the most key critical part right there, getting your center point rectangle out there and then having the actual dowel pins in an area that is not going to interfere with your processing and that is basically it that's the key part right there and uh you know i was just thinking about it. i'm like you know what i don't think i've ever done a video kind of explaining how or why i do the dial pins the way i do so i hope that helps somebody that was trying to work on dial pin flipping the great part about it is if you have your parts modeled in there you don't have to reset your origin or anything all you might have to do is reset your z height once you come in after the flip but that that would be about it and if you've processed your material and have good work holding where it's going to be flat no matter what then you probably don't even have to reset your z height you can just keep cruising and uh, you'll be good to go so that's basically it for this video i kind of just wanted to go over that i was you know like i said i was just thinking about it. i'm like you know i don't think i've ever gone over that in any video and i'm trying to get more videos out about different things like that i have this microscope here that i got a while back and i wanted to do a video on it it was a great buy from amazon during a prime day i think it was i think i got an extra discount uh, i think i got it last year and uh it's really nice to know why a cutter is leaving and leaving you know a defect on a part because I've changed the entire way I do my final cut processes and the microscope is a part of that and I'll go over that in the next video when I'm talking about that. I'm going to try to really get more of these videos out each week, uh, especially these kind of ones where I just kind of want to go over a topic and I, there's like less editing involved. Um, also you can catch, speaking of less editing, I've been trying to get a lot more live streaming in on Twitch, so there'll be a link down in the description if you if you guys hang out on Twitch at all, come on, hang, come on over the live stream and hang out. Try to get a few hours in during the weekdays, and then I'm gonna try to get longer streams in on the weekends. Uh, we also got a Discord down there where it's like kind of a mix of all the things that I'm involved in, all my hobbies and business and everything else. There's CNC machining in there. 
custom computer builds, custom cable making, some computer gaming channels that I put in there as well. So I got people who are coming in from the Twitch. There's uh, some people who are coming in from machining just from this uh, YouTube videos and then my regular social media with all the computer modding stuff. So it's like kind of a, a variety discord of all the different things that I enjoy, all my different hobbies. There's a couple, uh, yeah, there's a couple channels for CNC and Makerspace. Uh, I got some gaming channels and then we got, you know, custom cables and all that kind of stuff going on. So if any of those things are of interest to you, we'd love to have you over in the Discord, share your wisdom or ask questions and get help on the projects you're working on. Uh, some knowledgeable people are starting to file in there and helping out others in their quest to build the best custom cables. We've been talking a lot about the uh, FE combs recently and like, how much current is involved on each rail and the gauge specifics and tweet it's, it's allowed me to come back and look at the different sizes of my fe combs and tweak some things so uh all kinds of troubleshooting and sharing of work and all that kind of stuff in the discord so if you're on discord love to have you stop by and uh i think that's going to be about it i appreciate you guys for watching don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell hit like if you like the video and uh yeah, we'll see you in the next video. Peace.